Welcome back to the No Bullshit Guide to Java Spring Boot Part 17. Today we cover transactions in the transactional annotation. Our example today is a bank account. Imagine you have two users, Peach and Barry, they both start with $100. Barry then sends Peach $10, and at the end of the transaction, Peach has 110 and Barry has 90. This works great under normal circumstances, but if one user tries to send more money than they have, then Peach will end up with $1,100, but Barry's transaction will fail. We have to be very careful with this transaction, otherwise we could accidentally generate new money. So transactions are all or nothing. If one part fails, you have to roll it all back, like it never happened. So the transactional annotation does many things. It will automatically roll back if a runtime exception is thrown, or any class extending the runtime exception and it will automatically commit to the database at the end of the method, so you don't have to call repository.safe. First up, if you do have Spring Security enabled, I went ahead and commented out the request matchers on our security filter chain and added in authorize any requests permit all. If you do not have Spring Security enabled, you can skip this step. Go to MySQL Workbench and run these three queries to generate our table and add in some data. Then create your matching entity class. And your bank account repository. Your bank controller. with a post mapping slash transfer that takes in a request body of a transfer DTO and then create your transfer DTO. Lastly, create your service class. And right now we will not annotate it with that transactional. We're gonna do that last. First up, we need to find both bank accounts by ID. And then if either one is empty, we'll throw a new runtime exception. Friendly reminder, this can be a custom exception. We're just keeping it simple. Then we get both bank accounts from the optional. We then need to add and deduct. So let's create a method, deduct, pass in your bank account and the amount. And if the bank account balance is less than the amount, then we'll throw a new runtime exception. After that, we can deduct the amount. Create another method, add. Pass in the bank account and the amount. And we'll just go ahead and increment the balance. Call the methods and pass in your parameters. And then we will return response entity dot OK. At this point in the code, we have added new money to the add account, but we haven't checked to see if the from account has enough. So let's do a print line statement and print out bank account repository dot find by ID to dot get name. The reason we're doing this is we're checking the actual database. What's the state in MySQL, not in memory. And FYI, this would be better as a logging statement, but again, we're just keeping it simple. And notice we never called repository dot save. We're gonna rely on the transactional annotation to handle that for us. Go back to your controller and inject your transfer service. Then we can call it and pass in the DTO. And this does return type of string. Boot up your project and then in Postman, ping it, but send an amount that's too high, 1000. We get the runtime exception, not enough money. But if I specify an appropriate amount, like $10, then I get success. 
But if you go over to MySQL Workbench and do a select star, you can see that nothing was updated. That's because repository.save was never called, and we didn't have the transactional annotation. So go back to your service class, and the only change we're going to make is add the at transactional annotation. Boot up your project, and then ping 1000 again. We get the same error. But if you go to your console, you can see that Peach, for a brief instant, had $1,100 in their bank account. So after the runtime exception was later thrown, the transactional annotation handled the rollback automatically of this account. And if you ping it with $10 again, you can see that it went through 90 and 110, even though we never called repository.save. Okay, here's a couple of notes. Transactional does allow you to customize it. You can do read only. So you can optimize your database interactions if there's no need to commit any data. You can also specify the propagation behavior. So what happens if a transactional method calls another method? Does it create a new transaction? There's a whole bunch of different propagation behavior you can look up. You can also specify the isolation level. So what if one transaction is updating data, but another transaction is reading it at the same time? Do you want it to finish before it reads it? You can look up isolation level as well. Anyways, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.